After all the fuss over fish, bird nests, and sonic booms, now the FAA wants to examine the impact of the Starship's heat shield on the environment and public safety? For real? What are they going to do with it? It all started when Mike Whitaker, head of the FAA, delivered a statement during a hearing before the House Transportation and Infrastructure Subcommittee on Aviation on September 24th. In his speech, Whitaker firmly claimed that the FAA had done nothing wrong. He further emphasized that SpaceX had failed to comply with regulations, stating that the best course of action for the company was was to follow the existing legal framework. In a swift and fiery response, Elon Musk took to X with a short but powerful tweet, he needs to resign. It's not the first time Musk has publicly criticized regulatory agencies, but his words this time were particularly harsh. SpaceX wasted no time in firing back at the FAA's claims. The company boldly declared that Mike Whitaker was, in fact, out of touch with the reality of SpaceX's launch licensing process. Through their official channels, SpaceX made it clear FAA Administrator Whitaker made several incorrect statements today regarding SpaceX. In fact, every statement he made was incorrect. To back up their stance, SpaceX released a detailed memo outlining the real sequence of events regarding their licensing and operations. Tensions continued to escalate as the FAA fired back. The agency stated, The FAA requires a license modification if an operator proposes a change that significantly affects public safety. A change is considered significant to public safety if it alters or impacts the following. Type of payload, type of launch or re-entry vehicle, type or quantity of hazardous materials, flight trajectory, launch or re-entry site or alternate landing site, or any safety critical system, policy, procedure, requirement, criterion or standard. In case you weren't aware, that's the infamous subpart D of part 450, a highly controversial set of regulations from the FAA. The agency even issued an additional statement, the proposal to return the booster to the launch site, if not previously evaluated and approved by the FAA for prior flights, represents a significant change impacting public safety. Modifications to the vehicle's thermal protection system, TPS, may also be significant if the TPS is a safety-critical system or component affecting public safety. Well, yes, the heat shield is critical. It literally determines whether the spacecraft survives re-entry, and SpaceX has replaced the entire heat shield for Ship 30. But here's the real question. How exactly does this new heat shield pose more risk than the previous one? And more importantly, how does the FAA plan to measure and assess these risks? Ship 30 is landing in remote waters, far from any populated areas. That pretty much eliminates most of the human safety concerns. So, are they now focusing on the well-being of sea creatures? Are they seriously going to calculate the odds of a plate-sized heat shield tile landing on a fish? No, seriously, I still don't get it. So I have to ask, what do you all think the FAA is trying to do here? Will things go the same way as when the Fish and Wildlife Service investigated whether a hot staging ring might fall on a random shark? And will they restart a 60-day review process to look into it? Do you have the answers? These actions by the FAA really expose their true motives. Clearly, the agency is nitpicking, abusing its power to tighten control over SpaceX. This approach is really unfair and heavy-handed. We all know SpaceX constantly makes hundreds of improvements, big and small, to their hardware with each flight. But by the FAA's logic, if SpaceX wants to launch frequently, they better stop innovating altogether. For every single improvement, they'd have to quietly wait around while the federal agencies do their job. You know, like running a study on how the sonic boom of a rocket affects the mental well-being of a SEAL. Who knows? After all, the FAA's core concern is regulating aviation. The space industry is merely an add-on to their portfolio, since rockets rely on airspace for launches. Essentially, when it comes to launching spacecraft, the FAA primarily focuses on what happens on the ground, environment, people, fish, and every living creature in between. They lack a deep understanding of space flights or the technical advancements that drive the industry forward. And honestly, Starship launches only really concern marine life if there's some massive incident that disrupts marine population, or when they're planning to launch a shark into space. If the FAA continues to operate like it's stuck in the 1990s, all of SpaceX's technical advancements will be blocked, not because of any real threat to public safety, but because of bureaucrats sitting behind desks, far removed from reality. They see only numbers and probabilities rather than recognizing the true progress being made in the space industry. Public safety for humans, wildlife, and the environment is undeniably crucial. However, the FAA 
Federal Aviation Administration, needs to focus on performing its duties more effectively with streamlined and swift processes that align with the current realities and demands of the private rocket launch industry. Sticking to outdated legal frameworks is stifling progress across the board. This is especially true for Part 450, a newly implemented set of regulations that the FAA is using to hinder SpaceX's Starship development. But it's not just SpaceX that's feeling the pinch. This regulation is also creating significant obstacles for many other private space companies. In fact, Part 450 is making it increasingly difficult for businesses in the industry to secure permits and carry out rocket launch operations. A special hearing was held on September 10th, where several members of the U.S. Congress called for a review and revision of Part 450. The regulations that have sparked significant backlash from the space industry. Dave Cavosa, the president of the Commercial Spaceflight Federation, an organization representing numerous rocket launch companies, testified during this hearing. He made it clear, stating, the way it is being implemented today has caused severe licensing delays, confusion, and is jeopardizing our long-held leadership position. Cavosa also highlighted specific issues, such as the lengthy pre-registration process with the FAA. Alongside concerns from businesses, Part 450 has faced significant criticism from Congress members. During the hearing on September 10th, Congressman Brian Babin, R. Texas, chairman of the Oversight Subcommittee, strongly criticized the situation, stating, License processing under the new Part 450 process is moving at a snail's pace. Following that, Congresswoman Haley Stevens, D. Mike Mars, chair of the subcommittee, didn't hold back her disappointment either. We are in a bureaucratic soup. We know we're not getting to the moon unless we get some commercial spacecraft, so something's not working here. Most of the comments during the hearing focused on the urgent need to reform the process and regulations under Part 450. The only individual defending these regulations was Kelvin Coleman, the FAA's Deputy Executive Director for Commercial Space Transportation. He mentioned that his office has developed new tools to assist license applicants and continues to improve guidance circulars while holding workshops and office hours on regulations. Additionally, with a budget increase in fiscal year 2024, the office has expanded its staff to 158 and is proposing further resource increases for 2025 to hire additional personnel for licensing operations. Despite these efforts, the initiatives have yet to meet the expectations of businesses in the space industry. Companies are not only facing delays in the licensing process, but also grappling with confusion and ambiguity in meeting the requirements of Part 450. One anticipated step to tackle this issue is the establishment of Spark, a committee aimed at developing aerospace regulations initiated by the FAA. In February, Coleman announced that the FAA would set up Spark to explore solutions for improving the licensing process under Part 450. He expressed hope that the committee would launch by this fall. The necessity for Spark has become even more evident as the number of licensing applications from commercial space operators has surged in recent years. In 2023, the number of licensed operators tripled from 41 in 2020 to 124. It's projected that this number will double again by 2026, creating significant pressure on the FAA's licensing system. However, nearly eight months have passed and the Spark Committee has yet to be established. FAA, despite all this time, still seems to not understand the concept of iterative development. All right, that's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more in-depth looks at the latest advancements in space technology. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.